Hi, everyone. <clears throat> so I'm going to make a longer video regarding the fullness of the Gentiles and toss in there the times of the Gentiles, because that was the question that I originally got from the video that I did about Daniel 12, how the book is sealed at the time of the end and many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. This has to do with the blindness cast over Israel, Luke 19, for not knowing the time of the their visitation, uh, the things belonging to the their peace, now they've been hid from thine eyes. This comes from Israel not accepting the king, coming to bring the kingdom. First presentation of the kingdom was made. That was the triumphal entry. The, the purpose of the triumphal entry was the king coming to bring the kingdom. They rejected it. So immediately, several things, three, I want to think three, but there's probably more. First, blindness was cast over Israel because they knew not the time of their visitation. Second, and that's uh, Luke 19. Let's just read this. So this is probably going to involve a larger conversation. The reason I titled the video the way that I did is because apparently my less than a minute video, my short, got shared. And it's been viewed 371 times and, and two people, which is a low number, disliked it. And I'm going to say that, that people disliked it based on the premise that people believe in large part because this comes from Paul in the book of Romans, which is a Gentile epistle, right? So he's got to be talking about things pertaining to the church and the church age, right? No, he's referring to an Old Testament prophecy. But because it's written where it is, by who it's it's written uh, from, or by who it's written by, people automatically want to think that it's talking about the church and the rapture, that the fullness of the Gentiles has something to do with the end of the present dispensation. It doesn't, and, and I will go through that in great detail in this video again. But for those who would dislike it based on the premise that I say it's not about the church, and it's not about the rapture. Why does that bother you? What benefit is there to believe that that term relates to us in this present dispensation? Even if it did, it's not attached to any specific endpoint where you could say, oh, it's on this day and this time and this hour. I want it to relate to me because if it does, I know when I'm leaving. I know when the rapture is going to happen. It's not tied to that. It's, it's a general term that is used to apply to a situation that was originally prophesied in the Old Testament. And we know this because it says in Romans 11, going to kind of establish the baseline for the title first, why I'm even doing this. It says, lest uh, would not have you to be ignorant, lest you should be wise in your own conceit that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. Old Testament. There shall come out a sign the deliverer and shall turn away in godliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant when I shall take away their sins. What part of that has anything to do with us in the present dispensation and the rapture of the church? It has specifically, as Paul wrote, if you read more than one verse, to do with the salvation of Israel. Does that happen at the rapture? No, it happens at the second coming. So why people are so hard-coded that this has anything to do with us or the present dispensation or the rapture is a mystery to me. He says the mystery is that blindness and parts happen to Israel until an end point, the fullness of the Gentiles become in. And at that point, all Israel shall be saved. So this does in no way, other than who wrote it and in the book they wrote it, and people are so... Romans through Philemon, Romans through Philemon, Paul, Paul's our teacher. So if he's saying it, it must relate to us. He specifically tells you it relates to an Old Testament prophecy by using the words, as it is written, Old Testament. So where in the Old Testament does it talk about the fullness of the Gentiles? Because clearly if he's referring to an as it is written, there shall come out a sign the deliverer shall turn away in godliness from Jacob. You're going to find that written somewhere else in the scriptures. Where is it written? In the book of Joel, in a book of prophecy, which tells you that 
all Israel shall be saved because Jesus is going to physically return and save them. And that is the point where the fullness of the Gentiles comes in. And the words Gentile and full is right in that same passage with Jesus coming to physically save Israel. So I don't know why, based on a one minute video alone that I said, if people are trying to link the fullness of the Gentiles, which is a Gentile specific term to the rapture, which is comprised of Jews and Gentiles in a present dispensation, which is characterized by co-equality of Jews and Gentiles. Then why the fullness of the Gentiles would relate to something that is not Gentile specific, which means it's not present dispensation and it's not rapture of the church. Why, based on that premise alone, people would have an issue with it? Clearly they do. And the question I ask is, why do you have an issue with that when it isn't linked specifically to any hard-coded date? It's just an, an end point. The blindness is going to be lifted from Israel and they're going to be saved. It doesn't specifically say on this date in this time. And you're saying, oh, it relates to me because I want that specific day and time to relate to me. And it doesn't. And now I'm mad at you for telling me that. It doesn't say that. It's just an end point for blindness being lifted and Israel being saved. Just a general concept. Yes, elsewhere it is linked to specific prophecies, which have days and times, but that one specifically isn't. So for people to just have an issue off the cuff with saying it doesn't relate to us and uh, the event which takes us from this earth is weird because that verse isn't telling you anything date specific or, or time specific to where you should have an issue that it doesn't relate to you. <laughs> Let's continue. So why, why is it a problem that it doesn't relate to us? It's not. Um, and, and I don't know why we would want to continue believing incorrectly. Luke 19. This has to do specifically with blindness being cast over Israel. Luke, or excuse me, uh, Romans 11. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, lest you should of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceit that blindness in part is happened to Israel, point A, until, point B, the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And at that point, all Israel is going to be saved. Okay, so you have your point A and point B. Point A is Luke 19, triumphal entry. When the religious leaders told Jesus to make his disciples hush. And he said, no. He said in Luke 19, 42, if thou hadst known, even thou, at least in this thy day, the things which belong unto thy peace, things which belong to the kingdom, but now they are hid from thine eyes. For the day shall come upon thee that thine enemy shall cast a trench about thee, shall compass thee round, keep thee on every side, shall lay thee even with the ground and thy children within thee and shall not leave in thee one stone upon another because thou knewest not the time of thy visitation. So blindness is cast because Israel rejected the king bringing the kingdom. Hi, Paul, welcome. Nice to see you. So blindness is cast. And then the events of 70 AD are prophesied as a specific recompense for Israel not knowing when Jesus was coming to bring them the kingdom. They had two specific prophecies, Daniel 9 and Zechariah 9. They missed it. When you take this over to Matthew, there's even more that we learn about that was a specific recompense for Israel missing the day of their visitation. Blindness is cast, 70 AD prophesied. What else does he say? Matthew 21 and Luke 19 are parallel passages. So Matthew 21 he says, oh, and this had uh, the cursing of the fig tree, which had to do with the law and Israel and not believing, lack of faith, all that kind of thing. Later in the chapter, Matthew 21, after the cursing of the fig tree, he says to the religious leaders, after he tells them a parable, <laughs> about how they're going to be destroyed for their wickedness and for their uh, destroying him, which they were seeking to do. 
Jesus said unto them, did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected? Because what did they do? Triumphal entry, they rejected the king coming to bring the kingdom. He says, did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders disallowed? The same is made the head of the corner. This is a reference to Isaiah 28. Fascinatingly enough, the blindness is lifted in Isaiah 29. So Isaiah 28 and Isaiah 29 contain the answers to the casting of blindness and the lifting of the blindness, which are the points A and B in Romans 11. The mystery, blindness, cast, and then uh, when the fullness of the Gentiles be come in and all Israel is going to be saved. So if you're looking for Old Testament prophecies, because, you know, Paul's pointing you back to the Old Testament as it is written, which means go to the Old Testament, <laughs> Isaiah 28 and 29, Joel 2 and 3. Did you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected the same as made the head of the corner? This is Isaiah 28. It is the Lord's doing is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you because he offered it and they rejected it. So he says, okay, I'm going to take it from you. Who am I going to give it to? A nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. Enter, four days later, the dispensation of the grace of God, where the Gentiles are now invited to partake of heavenly promises through faith in Christ because it was a transition from the Old Covenant to the New. The Gentiles were not invited to partake of heavenly promises until the Old Covenant was done away with. Once it was done away with promptly, they were then invited to participate by faith in Christ. The period of time that began on the cross, the dispensation of the grace of God, under new covenant will persist. Gentiles are now invited to participate alongside Israel. The rapture of the church, which ends the present dispensation and or administration, because the administration of God in the affairs of mankind during the present dispensation is starkly different than it will be in the next dispensation, which uh, Jews and Gentiles are still going to be saved the same way because it's under a new covenant relationship with God. So the new covenant operates one way. Still going to get the same spirit. Still going to be required to believe uh, by the same faith. The action of the spirit will not be different. The new covenant will not be different. But the administration of God in the affairs of mankind will be starkly different. Right now, the blessing is walking by faith and not by sight. The end of the dispensation, uh, which is characterized by walking by faith and not by sight, will be <laughs> uh, signs galore in the next dispensation. They won't. Well, they will have to believe by faith, but they're still going to see. They're going to see God in everything uh, amidst a vile period of time. It is the judgment of the faithless after the removal of the faithful. So the present dispensation ends with the removal of the faithful, judgment of the faithless. However, the way that the faithless become faithful is still believing in Jesus under new covenant relationship. That doesn't change. The administration of God in the affairs of mankind will change. Thus, we call them dispensations. Dispensation, administration, same thing. So the way God deals with mankind will change. Thus, we call it a different dispensation. The thing that we need to keep in mind is that Israel is not saved immediately after the rapture of the church. If they were, there wouldn't be a need for a whole seven-year period that is designed to bring Israel to saving faith. So it would be impossible to link the fullness of the Gentiles to the rapture of the church because all Israel is not saved at that point in time. Israel is judged at that point in time, and a remnant will be brought through the fire during the seven-year period. However, the only reason there is a remnant preserved according to the election of grace is because God makes it so in the midst of the week. When he causes the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, or he allows someone else to cause it to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, Michael is given the commission to get Israel, the remnant who follows the Lord's instruction to flee, to safety, where they can then run to and fro and knowledge can be increased and blindness can be lifted. That does not happen immediately after the rapture of the church. It happens 
seven years after the rapture of the church. So Matthew 22 previews, or excuse me, Matthew 21 previews the present dispensation where the kingdom of God is going to be taken from Israel because they rejected the king and the kingdom. Four days later, he went to the cross and it's going to be taken from them and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof. This is the meaning of the first shall be last and the last shall be first is the last to whom the kingdom was offered get there first. Revelation 4 and 5. The first to whom the kingdom was offered get there last. When it's brought from heaven to earth to be established for a thousand years. They will still get there. Which is the whole point of what Paul is telling us Gentiles and Romans are telling people in the book of Romans not to be boastful about, not to be wise in their own conceit, not to think themselves better because Israel will get there too. He starts the chapter off by saying the following, Romans 11. Even so then at this present time, there also is a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace it is no more of works, otherwise grace is no more grace. But it be of works, then it is no more grace, otherwise work is no more work. <laughs> uh, I use this in the, is baptism necessary for um, for salvation conversation? Well, well, water baptism is a work. So if you're saved by grace and people tack on a work, water baptism onto it, then grace is no more grace. So is it grace or is it work? Because you can't combine the two. And Paul is very clear about that in Romans 11. What then? Israel hath not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election hath obtained it, the rest were blinded. Luke 19. According as it is written, God hath given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. David saith, let their table be made a snare, and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened, that they may not see, and bow down their back alway. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. Because remember the sequence of events. Their fall sent him to the cross four days later, where he put away the works permanently of the old covenant, which Gentiles were never invited to be a part of. But immediately after he rose, the great commission was given to the, those same 11 who were once upon a time told not to go to the way of the Gentiles to preach. Matthew 10, under the old covenant. But once the old covenant was put away with and he, he rose in glory under the new covenant, uh, he says, yep, go preach to him. Through their fall, through Israel's fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles. Remember, have you never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders disallowed, the same as made the head of the corner, it is the Lord's doing, is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore, I say the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. The Gentiles were invited to participate through faith in Christ under new covenant. Romans uh, 11, 13, for I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am, I am the apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office by enemies that may provoke to emulation them, which are my flesh and might save some of them. Paul wrote to the Gentiles, but he talked to the Jews. Why? Because he used his apostleship to the Gentile cities to teach as many Jews as possible and to illuminate the way for them. Then it talks about the original branches being broken off and us wild branches being grafted in. But if the original branches continue not in unbelief, they are able to, to be grafted in. This is talking about the salvation of the Jewish nation. It will come. When will it come? We know blindness was cast because they rejected Jesus at the triumphal entry and they'll be blind until a certain point. When will that blindness persist to the fullness of the Gentiles? And at that point, all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, Old Testament, there shall come out of Simon the deliverer, or shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant when I shall take away their sins. The, the salvation of the Jewish nation. Israel's blindness being lifted and them calling upon the Lord to save them is specifically pinpointed in the book of Revelation. The Lamb's wife is not a reference to uh, the church. We may be the bride of Christ, but the wife of God is Israel, thus named in the prophets. 
he gave the house of Israel. This goes back to, to Jeremiah 3. Uh, he had covenant relationship with Israel. Old covenant. He put away. Okay, so he had a covenant relationship with Israel. <laughs> I get a little bit too far down this rabbit trail. But uh, Israel was one, one house of Israel. And then after the reign of Solomon, the division of the kingdom, you have the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. The northern kingdom was 10 tribes and the southern kingdom was two tribes. So you have the house of Israel, the northern kingdom, and the house of Judah, the southern kingdom. The house of Israel, the northern kingdom, was put away because of their adultery, following after false gods. God gave them a bill of divorce, but he did not divorce the house of Judah. Why not? Because a house divided against itself cannot stand. Jesus is a lion of the tribe of Judah. So God did not give the house of Judah a bill of divorce because God was going to come through the house of Judah to redeem all of Israel. The wife of God is Israel and her salvation is specifically pinpointed in the book of Revelation. The salvation of the Jewish nation, the time when blindness is lifted and they call upon the name of the Lord to save them. Revelation 19, 7, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the lamb has come. His wife, Israel, hath made herself ready. How do you make yourself ready? To her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white, or fine linen is the righteousness of the saints. Everyone makes themselves ready for Christ by believing on him to be saved. And as overcomers were told that they would get in the letter to the church in Sardis, white robes the lamb's wife god's wife hath made herself ready she called upon his name because she believed in him at the very last moment that is revelation 19 7 and 8 because revelation 19 11 tells you when he's coming back so literally it is the last thing that happens before the second coming as the blindness is lifted we further see evidence of this in Isaiah 29. Why was this um, question asked when I was going through the book of Daniel? Because there's a command to seal the word, seal the book to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, knowledge shall be increased. Daniel is a sealed book to Israel and will be sealed to Israel, meaning that they won't understand it. It's one of those things, uh, the book of Daniel is very uh, heavy, and it requires the spirit to discern. If they don't have the spirit, they can't discern it. They only get the spirit by being saved in new covenant relationship. So if they're not saved and they don't have the spirit, they're not going to get it. They will get it when they have the spirit, which means they're saved, <laughs> which requires that blindness be lifted. Isaiah 29 Nine, stay yourselves in wonder, cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. The Lord hath poured upon you the spirit of deep sleep, hath closed your eyes, the prophets, your rulers, the, seeth hath he, the seers hath he covered. When did that happen? Blindness in part is happened to Israel. When? Luke 19, for knowing not the time of their visitation. The vision of all has become Unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, the book of Daniel, sealed the book to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro. Knowledge shall be increased. People say that's related to Revelation. No, Revelation is an unsealed book. Daniel is a sealed book. Daniel and Revelation correlate. This is not a reference to the book of Revelation. This is a reference to the book of Daniel. The vision of all is become unto you as the... Words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, read this, I pray thee, and he saith, I cannot, for it is sealed. The book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, read this, I pray thee, and he saith, I am not learned. Wherefore the Lord said, for as much as his people draw near me with their mouth and their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. First coming, why they rejected him. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder for the wisdom of their wise men shall perish and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. Blindness and cast. Blindness is cast and they're not going to get it until. Until. 
in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book and their eye, the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. What day? The meek shall also increase their joy in the Lord and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. What day? For the terrible one is brought to naught and the scorner is consumed and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. That's the second coming of Christ, the judgment of the beast, the false prophet, and the remnant of un, uh, the remnant of unbelievers slain with the sword that proceeds out of Jesus' mouth. So what day is blindness going to be lifted? The day that Jesus returns at the second coming to physically save Israel, which is what Paul said. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out a sign the deliverer shall turn away in godliness from Jacob. That is when the fullness of the Gentiles comes in. So let's go to Joel next to see the specific terms mentioned along with the physical salvation of Israel by Jesus. Continuing in Isaiah 29, 21, that make a man in a thunder for a word, lay a snare for him that reproveth at the gate, turn aside the just for a thing of naught. Therefore, thus saith the Lord who redeemed Abraham concerning the house of Jacob, Jacob shall not now be ashamed, neither shall his face now wax pale. But when he seeth his children, the work of mine hands in the midst of him, then shall they sanctify my, my name and sanctify the Holy One of Jacob and shall fear the God of Israel. They also that erred in spirit shall come to understanding and they that murmured shall learn doctrine because blindness was lifted. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits that blindness in part has happened to Israel. Luke 19 until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. Isaiah 29, Joel 3, and so all Israel shall be saved in the day that blindness is lifted. So it is written, Israel shall be saved. Uh, so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come on a sign. The deliverer shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. When is all Israel saved? There is only one time where all Israel shall be saved. Second coming of Christ. Joel 2, 32. It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance. As the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer. There shall be deliverance. As the Lord has said, and in the remnant whom the Lord shall call, there always remains a remnant according to the election of grace. Hence the reason why a remnant is preserved in the wilderness for the second half of the 70th week. So there can be someone spared in order to be saved. Otherwise, there should no flesh be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened by the flight out of Jerusalem. Matthew 24. Fullness of the Gentiles, immediate salvation of Israel. Joel 3, 9. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. If all Israel is being saved at the second coming, who is being judged? Not Israel, Gentiles. This is why, and I did in my little one minute video, I said, the present dispensation is characterized by a co-equality of Jews and Gentiles. Therefore, it pertains to both. The rapture of the church thus pertains to both Jews and Gentiles. It's not a Gentile salvation. It's Jews and Gentiles under the banner of faith in Christ. At a specific point in time, they're removed. The faithful are removed and the faithless are judged. At the end of that period of judgment, if all Israel is being saved, who's being judged? Not Israel. The fullness of the Gentiles is a specific Gentile term. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that that relates to Gentile salvation. Rather, if all Israel is being saved, then who's being judged? Not Israel. What's your only other option? The fullness of the Gentiles is a Gentile judgment, not a Gentile salvation. It is the judgment of Gentiles and the salvation of Israel at the second coming of Christ. This is where we get off the mark is thinking the fullness of the Gentiles is a Gentile salvation. No, it isn't Jewish salvation. All Israel shall be saved. 
Gentiles are getting judged in order that Israel can be saved. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. So fullness of the Gentiles. Well, there's your Gentile specific uh, information. Prepare war, wake up the mighty men, all the men of war draw near, let them come up. So who's coming up to do battle against Jesus? Gentiles. Beat your plowshares into swords, your pruning hooks into spears, let the weak say I am strong. This is your Armageddon. You're gathering into the Valley of Jehoshaphat, the Valley of Decision. Assemble yourselves, come all ye heathen. Okay, so he says, proclaim this among the Gentiles. And what did he just call them? Heathen. Gather yourselves round about that there cause thy mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be wakened. So heathen Gentiles. Come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Okay. Gentiles, heathen, judgment. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come get you down, for the press is full. Full of what? Gentiles, heathen, judgment, full. Fullness of the Gentiles. The fullness of the Gentiles is the treading of the wine press and wrath of Almighty God. Let the heathen be wakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. Put your sickle, uh, put you in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come get you down, for the press is full. Heathen Gentiles, bats overflow for their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened. The stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion. Gentiles, fullness, heathen, wickedness, judgment, salvation of Israel. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion, utter his voice from Jerusalem. The heavens and the earth shall shake, but the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. The reason I titled this video the way that I did, and I will reiterate myself, is what benefit is it to you to believe that the fullness of the Gentiles is talking about the present dispensation, the church, or the rapture of the church? First of all, it's not correct. And second of all, it's not specifically linked in that passage of scripture to any day specific event. So believing that it pertains to us still doesn't get you any closer to knowing when the rapture of the church is going to happen. More to the point, if you know any unbelievers who will be going into the tribulation and thinking that the fullness of the Gentiles or the Gentile salvation is the rapture of the church, then you're basically leaving them with no hope of salvation at all. There will be salvation of Gentiles and Jews in the 70th week. It'll be amidst hardship. Absolutely. But we're still leaving them with hope. They still have hope to come to saving knowledge up until Jesus returns at the second coming to save Israel and to judge heathen Gentiles. But to say that the fullness of the Gentiles is like if you're, you're not uh, saved before this point, then the, the fullness of the Gentiles, the volume of Gentiles being saved is, is at its capacity. And you're basically leaving no hope for your unsaved family members in the 70th week. Fortunately, God is gracious to uh, amidst the most heinous period ever, still provide time for people to, if they should live that long uh, and not be killed in the judgments, uh, give them more days, more time to come to saving knowledge. So, um, you know, he could just not give them that seven years and just say, okay, I'm going to just do it now. And if you're not saved, you're not saved. But amidst hardship, he's still giving people that time. It's amidst hardship, but he's still giving people that time. The gracious nature of God is still giving people time to come to him in the 70th week. So let's not cut that short <laughs> by saying uh, that the fullness of the Gentiles is uh, rapture related. And kind of like if they're not saved, then they don't get saved. Because that's essentially what you're saying. No, there's more time. And at the end of that time, people will have made a decision. Israel is going to be saved. The remnant preserved according to the election of grace. And the rest of them get judged. If it's not, uh, you know, if all Israel is being saved, there's only one other option for who is getting judged. And that's the Gentiles. It is a fullness of the wine press filled up with heathen wickedness Gentiles. And Jesus is smashing them like grapes. 
so much that the blood will be up to the space of the horse's bridle by 1,600 furlongs. Uh, and that is the distance from Basra, where the remnant will be preserved to Megiddo, Armageddon. It's all linked. So that is what the fullness of the Gentiles represents. Just because Paul wrote it doesn't mean that it's for us in this present dispensation and or pertaining to the end of this present dispensation. Just because it's written in Romans, which is the first of the Gentile epistles, doesn't mean it pertains to us. Anytime you see in the epistles, as it is written, go to the Old Testament. It is an Old Testament prophecy. And the answer to what the fullness of the Gentiles is, is given in the Old Testament prophecies, specifically Joel 3. So um, this is just one of those things where, because of who wrote it and where it's written, we assume wrongly, Old Testament. If you guys have any other questions, let me know. See you later.